Hey everybody, Steve Anderson here from andersonshooting.com and today we're going to show you what's important about a wrist above shoulders or surrender draw. Uh, the first thing that's really important is to have your hands in the exact same place every time. This will not be the same place every time. Okay. The other thing that's really important is to get the gun side elbow behind the gun. Uh, if you're doing this, it's very easy to hit the beaver tail. Sometimes hitting the beaver tail is a good idea. In the case of this surrender draw, it is not a good idea. So we're going to get the elbow behind the gun, and I'm going to put my left hand right in front of my nose. Okay, I don't, I don't actually touch the knuckle. Well, sometimes I do touch the knuckle to my nose, uh, but it, this puts my hand in the exact same place every time, and it puts, uh, puts my support hand as close to the gun as possible. Now, your sport may not allow this start position. IPSC may not allow it. IDPA may not allow it. Don't really care about any of that right now. I want the hands in the exact same place every time. You can use your hat, you can use your glasses, you can use whatever you want. But I like to use my ear and my nose because I've always got them. I could drive by a naked if I wanted to with just the belt, which would be weird. Try not to imagine that. Or maybe you should. It's, that's it, that's totally up to you. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the elbow behind the gun. We're gonna put the support hand right on top of the nose so the hands are in the exact same place every single time. Okay, we're already over a minute, so we'll save this one for the YouTube, and then we'll do the demos in a shorter version for the, uh, the Facebooks and the socials and the grams. Okay, so here's my start position. I'm gonna do a couple in slow motion so you can see what it looks like, okay? When the elbow is behind the gun, you can drive your hand straight down with zero risk of hitting the beaver tail, none. With the elbow behind the gun, you cannot hit the beaver tail, okay? So I'm gonna start with a one second part time. And we'll just see what that looks like. One second should be very easy. I'm drawing to an acceptable sight picture with my Walther PDP steel frame uh, set up for limited optics right now with the Magwell only because I can't be bothered to take the Magwell off. I've got a steadfast holster on a CR speed belt and hanger, and I've got Adidas flip flops. Okay, Walther, oh, and an amg-lab.com commander some time. So here we go. Here's a couple slow motion ones. Okay, drawing to an acceptable sight picture without pressing the trigger. I'm gonna end with my finger on the trigger. I am not going to press the trigger because when you're working with part times, it is too easy to honk that trigger to beat the part time. It's very tempting. So I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna draw to an acceptable sight picture. And you internet haters, bring it on. I am drawing to an acceptable sight picture every single time. And yes, I'm pointing my gun at the camera, not a human being. I know it feels weird, but a lot of great things feel weird the first time, okay? This will be a one second part time. I'm drawing to a fairly large, fairly close target. Um, it's actually a USPSA head, head box. We are roughly six feet away from it. Okay, you wanna, anytime you're working on speed, you want the, the, the target to be relatively easy because you're not gonna get quick on these stupid one-sixth size playing card targets. Those are useful for match mode. They are not useful for getting faster. Okay, here we go. One second part of time. All day long. Very easy to do. Super easy. Now, when you're doing reps of a drill, it's very important to imprint positive things about this process. Um, every rep is either gonna be a great rep or a great correction. Okay, I'm not gonna have any trouble with grip, but if I do, I'm gonna correct it, finish the drill, and imprint that it was a great correction. What you don't wanna do is stop what you're doing and go, oh my goodness, I've missed my grip, none of this is working, I'm an idiot and I suck. Those are thoughts that will go with you to the match. So we're gonna make sure that we get some reps into this, we're gonna make sure that we get good positive imprints. A very easy thing to do is to literally say the word great after every rep. That's extremely effective and very important. You don't believe me, you don't believe me, but you're gonna do it anyway, I hope. Here we go. So many people don't believe me. I'll just keep at it until everybody believes me. Here we go, one second part time. All day long. Drop it down to 0.9. Here we go, 0.9 part time. Another easy, easy part time. 0.9, one more. Super easy. Okay, 
go down to point eight. Notice my finger's on the trigger, but I'm not pressing the trigger. You internet hitters should love that, right? You, you, you should love it. It's so tactical to draw your gun with your finger on the trigger and not press the trigger to identify the threat. Could be grandma going in the fridge for snacks. May not want to shoot grandma. May want to shoot grandma if she's going for my good snacks. Don't know. Finger on the trigger, not pressing the trigger. It's so tactical. Good grief, it's so tactical. So tactical, I need more zippers and pockets. Notice that with the elbow behind the gun, I can be extremely aggressive. Literally a straight line from my start position down to my gun. I'm not doing any of this, I'm not doing any of this. I've got the hands in the exact same place every single time. If this isn't legal in your sport, find another place to put your support hand, okay? My wrists are above my respective shoulders. This is my shoulder, respectfully, respectively, it's there. Okay, and if the RO doesn't like it, comply with the RO. Don't argue with them. Just do what they tell you to do. It won't matter. Okay, here we go. Another super easy one. Where are we at now? Okay, that's eight. Let's go to seven. Okay, I corrected my grip. That was great. Point seven. Woo! He's on fire today. Now, the other thing that's really helpful is when I take my hand off my gun, if I leave it in kind of a gun hand shape, meaning if I leave it in the shape it needs to be to grab the, the, the butt, right? This is my butt grabbing, uh, this is my butt grabbing shape. I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna grab it. That way it can come right now and be ready to grab that butt with no issues of hitting the beaver. When you grab the beaver, sorry, when you grab the butt, you don't want to hit the beaver on the way to grabbing the butt. This is why we get the elbow behind the gun so we don't grab the beaver unintentionally. Beaver tail. The beaver tail. Make your own jokes. Okay, let's go straight to point six. Get a couple of those in the bank. And off we go. Point six part time, wrists above shoulders. Okay, didn't quite make that one. Let's try it again. I think that one's pretty close. Woo, that's a point six. Got your Will Smith there. Now that's how you're supposed to shoot. From now on, that's how you shoot. Hope my next partner shoots like that. Here we go, he will. Point six, all day long. One more for the haters. Point six, drawing to an acceptable sight picture, finger on the trigger, Adidas flip-flops. Andersonshooting.com, please go to upcoming classes and check out Andersonshooting.com. Also, all of these drills and these tips are in my book, Refinement and Repetition, which is the first best dry fire book in the world. I know that because I wrote it. If there had been another book available for about dry fire when I was coming up making GM, I would have bought that and you would not be watching this. That's how I know it was the first. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please go to upcoming classes at AndersonShooting.com. Let's get together. Let's stay together. Let's get this thing done. Let's quit screwing around, all right? Thanks.